How do you sell your business continuity program, your resilience program, to your senior executives or to your internal stakeholders? I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Bright Path, and that's what we're going to talk about in this week's weekly video. When you're trying to sell your business continuity program to your internal stakeholders, it's a lot like trying to get your toddler to eat their vegetables. You know it's good for them. They kind of know it's something they should do, but it's almost impossible to sell them on this idea of, of doing this. And while your executives undoubtedly understand that business continuity is important, it's hard to pinpoint how it tangibly benefits your bottom line. Understanding and internalizing and communicating the value of your business continuity program, that's a challenge that every business continuity professional I know, every resilience professional I know has had to deal with over time. Business continuity can't though be conveniently just ignored. You can't cover it in, like you might take vegetables and cover it in some cheesy goodness uh, and hope that that um, makes it something, makes it more palatable that they want to consume. Eventually, your company is going, is going to have some kind of incident, some kind of boom is going to hit. And before that does, you need to make sure that your stakeholders, from your C-suite to the lowest entry-level employee, understands the value of a consistent and coordinated approach to business continuity and crisis management. Let, let's talk for a minute about how why this is hard. Part of this is hard because we make it hard. We make business continuity into something that's difficult to understand because we lace it with a bunch of jargon. So first, I want you to start by getting all of that out of your system and try to use plain English in business terms as much as you can so that your teams, your leaders and stakeholders understand what it is that you're trying to do. That you understand, you're explaining things like a business impact analysis in clear business terms. If you can't do that, if you can't connect your program to the objectives of your organization in clear language, you're gonna really struggle with that. When we get past of that, let's talk about five ways then to communicate the values of your business continuity program. I always coach resilience professionals that you need to have some kind of well-rehearsed elevator speech on how you're going to explain the value of your program to the organization because you need to take advantage of every opportunity to advocate for your program. If your pitch starts with because audit says so or because the regulations say so, then you're going to be really lucky to get anywhere at all. That's not the place to start. Compliance needs to be the last thing that you talk about. So here are five ways that I use, five ways I use to explain the value of business continuity and crisis management program, the ways that we win over stakeholders when we're helping our clients succeed. The first is that investing in business continuity demonstrates that you value your people. In the middle of things that we're all dealing with right now, the post-COVID era, environmental, social, and governance concerns calls for true workplace diversity and equity actions and the squeeze of the great resignation or great reshuffle, it's more important than ever that you take care of your team. Having a business continuity program in place is a critical way of doing so because it helps you protect human life and safety, but it also positions your team to be able to respond more quickly to recover, to protect uh, your team and recover your organizational assets before, during, and after a crisis. Your employees are your most important asset that you have. Investing in their well-being and safety will pay dividends during your next crisis. The second is that your business continuity program protects your organization's most valuable assets. It gives you a structured way for identifying what those are. What are those valuable assets that you have? And how do you implement a plan to hedge against the potential loss or damage to those assets? If your business is largely digital, for example, that might include things like backups and cybersecurity measures, alternative software and hardware, alternate vendors that need to come into play in the event of a failure. If you're primarily a brick and mortar operation, that might include equipment or space that's key to manufacturing, distribution, service delivery, storage. No two businesses are alike, and that's why it's important that you have a program that's designed to fit your needs. The third is that investing in business continuity helps protect your reputation and it elevates you over the competition. I think we've heard, I think it was Warren Buffett who said it can take decades to build a reputation but only minutes to destroy it. Business continuity helps you understand that 
by having making sure that your operations can continue and therefore help protect your reputation and elevate you over the competition. It also means that when the proverbial crap hits the fan, you're prepared and you're able to respond more quickly and more effectively to whatever that new disruption is. For example, in the early days of COVID, our clients that had more mature business continuity and crisis management capabilities made decisions more quickly. They knew what their critical business operations were and the technologies that they need, and they invested in those quickly. They snapped up, um, they snapped up Wi-Fi hotspots and web cameras and microphones and laptops and things that became difficult to acquire in some parts of the world in those early days of COVID in you know Q1, Q2, uh, Q3, even in 2020. The fourth is that your business county program does, after all, help you meet your compliance obligations. So while you're serving a different role than compliance in a resilience function, you, there's some overlap. Business continuity best practices often meet the demands of your regulatory and compliance obligations. As a result, investing in business continuity is an indirect investment in helping you meet those compliance obligations. And business continuity and crisis management are explicit regulatory imperatives in some spaces, PCI for payment card industry, high trust ENAC and direct trust for patient health information are just a couple of those examples. And then fifth, an effective business continuity program helps you identify and mitigate risk. A healthy program for business continuity is to enterprise risk management the way that vitamin D relates to calcium, if you want to use the, of that example. You can drink milk all day long, but without vitamin D from your diet or your sun, your body can't process all of that calcium and therefore build bones, muscles, and more. Similarly, you need a strong business continuity and crisis management program to identify and prepare for specific risks. That helps your enterprise risk capabilities and other risk-focused teams to help achieve their mission of anticipating and avoiding those same risks. That you share a lot of the same stakeholders, you're treading a lot of the same ground, you need each other to be successful. An effective business continuity program will help you identify and mitigate risk. These are five ways that we do this. Um, there are other metrics, of course, and things that you could dive into and go a little deeper, but these are the five main ways in which I talk to your CEOs, to your senior executives, when I have the opportunity in order to explain the value of business continuity, crisis management, and thus improving your organization's resilience. That's it for this week's video. Video. That's it for this week's video. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.